be helpful. Um, if I can just come back with a couple of follow-up questions, I'll maybe come to, to you, Lorraine, and one of the things, just touching on the issue around antisocial behaviour that, that we're very, very um, aware of, um, I'm aware that there is ev evidence around the sort of use and the um, unintended consequences or perhaps intended consequences uh, of the sort of misuse of fireworks. And uh, I know from some of the uh, information that we've been given that um, there is evidence to suggest that most fireworks injuries are actually take place at, at, at end up at, at, at private events. Uh, they often involve young people, they often involve young males, uh, and they seem to be the sort of group that are most uh, at risk. Um, in that regard, then, if we're looking at how the bill um, responds to issues around antisocial behaviour, and I think the other th issue within that is around injuries to a lot of them are to, in, to heads, hands, that type of injury, some of which can be very serious. Do you feel the provisions of the bill um, would adequately support our efforts to tackle antisocial behaviour, particularly from the perspective of reducing injuries? I think it helps. Um, I don't think it's the complete answer. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was staggered um, when we were out. I was in, for example, in Pollock Shields one miserable night in Glasgow talking to 65 people from the community who had come out to talk to us about fireworks. Mm -hmm. and, and I readily admit you know, I didn't understand the, you know, the depth of it. And they were telling us really horrific stories of almost rite of passage stuff happening with young people. You know, um, you know, how long can you hold a lit firework in your hand? You know, stuff like that. And, and I was astonished by it and thought, oh my God, what, you know, what, what do we do here? So I think that we have to have the measures that we have in this bill. I think that that's a very good starting point. We need to have something to start with and something to give us some baseline information on. I don't think it's the whole story. I think that I've, I've already said, and I'm happy to go you know, further and say that we, we really do need to think differently about antisocial behaviour. Um, my view is that, that when we know so much about trauma and ACEs and deprivation and hopelessness and poverty, and the behaviours that that you know that, that that are responsive to all of that, you know, I think it's no surprise to us that our young people do behave antisocially, mm -hmm. and and it's not just the young people. I think it's just worth making that point. Um, I don't want to go too far into the realms of antisocial behaviour because we're here to talk about fireworks, but um, my organisation has completed some significant pieces of research, just trying to understand what is happening in Scotland around antisocial behaviour. Who is behaving antisocially? What is antisocial behaviour? And it's not what you think. Mm. Um, it, and and I, I was listening before I came in to Stuart talking about the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service seeing an increase um, in antisocial behaviour. And I think that's reflected across the piece. Mm. Yeah. Before COVID, we, were, we had evidence to say that that was reducing. But I think COVID has, without a doubt, you know, been a part to play in it. Mm. And... And, and, you know, fireworks, um, like I say, are, are, are part of the culture in some communities. It's part of what you do. You know, it's, it's, it's the game that you play. And we really need to think about how we support those communities and individuals in those communities to choose different paths. Mm -hmm. So restricting the use of fireworks, restricting the access is, is part of it. But we, I think we really need to think long and hard about what additional supports we can put in. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. Um, coming to